you know, when we talk about the union movement, we never hear the word love, right? You never hear love. When I go to work, I hear my, my clock number, my name, right? And management wondering where my time is going. And I think every worker is facing that. I grew up on the reserve and I moved to the city. And it was a whole different world for me. You know, I was invisible, I was a First Nation woman, and I didn't have the confidence to, to make the changes because I kept getting told, no, no, you can't do this, no, you can't do this. Je suis juste, je ne suis plus juste une personne qu'on peut euh, juste dire, bon, maintenant, tu vas faire ça et tu te tais et tu dis rien. Before I became the human rights rep, uh, an employee actually went on the floor and uh, blurted out, you immigrant. I did a campaign for my president, I was handing out brochures, and I had uh, a brother come out and see me and all of a sudden make the joke about, oh, she's a half-breed. I'm a minority in my workplace, and for the majority of times I kept my mouth shut because that's all I want to do, just come into the work, do my job, and just go home. Trouble free, no worries or anything like that. But how I see what's going on, I was satisfied. I, sometimes I didn't feel I was being represented properly. We've been taught that, you know, this, we should be happy just to have a job. And sometimes we're told to not challenge because we should be happy just to have a job. When I started, I was alone. Today, we are about 18 delegates dans ma section locale, qui sont euh, des travailleurs, des travailleuses de couleur et, et autochtones. If we don't stand up for labor, right, we're not going to have nothing. How I got involved in the labor movement was through the Idle No More movement. As the movement progressed, I start seeing who was supporting it and the first people to jump aboard to support I Don't Know More was Unifor and that's what got me involved because it felt like I mattered. My interests mattered to the union. Maintenant j'ai une voix, j'ai le droit de parler, j'ai le droit de m'exprimer, j'ai le droit de dire non, ça fait pas mon affaire et ne pas avoir peur de perdre son emploi. I think what we need to do, I think it's critical that we not only challenge our leadership, our upper leadership, but I think we also need to challenge some of the community leaders, our MPs. We need to make our voices heard. No, it's not perfect. The union is not perfect. But if you don't speak up, then you don't have a voice. And that's what we got to have. People got to see that real change comes from the person sitting across the table from you. You have to find allies and not all the allies look like us. My allies, I have to understand that, stand beside me, don't stand in front of me, don't stand behind me, stand beside me, we'll go together. I think there's a relief. People believe that there's a relief, malgré il reste beaucoup de difficulties euh, devant nous autres. Euh, on sait très bien que ça vient pas, ça vient pas Euh, comme ça au hasard, on, on doit continuer à travailler, on doit laisser un héritage pour nos enfants, pour s'affirmer. Equity is not a choice. Don't give a choice, it's not a choice. It, it has to be a demand, that we are demanding that equality is a must. Too many times we hear, oh, we only got the job because you're a woman of color. No, because I'm a woman of color, that's a skill. Recognize my skill. My skill is that I can get through oppression being a woman. I can fight through being discriminated because of my race. That's a skill. It's not just a white privilege right for them to have respect and dignity. I'm not afraid to tell them that everybody deserves rights and dignity. Everyone does. And if we believe in the union, that's what we should be exercising. The reason why I'm so involved with my union is because I need change. I need change to happen, not just for me, but for everybody else.